road to Baldur's Gate is a long one. Who knows how long it'll take these folks to get there on foot. If they make it. They're slow. Vulnerable. Half or more will die long before Basilisk Gate. Doesn't seem to trouble you a jot. What good would it do for me to be troubled? We can't save them all. A scout just reported. The goblin's leadership has been decimated. We might escape this place yet. I took a collection from all of us. It isn't much, but you've earned it. It's not enough, but it's all we have. Halsin will likely want to thank you too, mind. He returned just a while ago. I believe he's catching up with Corker. As for us... No armies at our heels. Amazing. We can finally leave. But perhaps we need not speak of farewells. We'll join your camp tonight to celebrate if you'll have us. Eldrell didn't want us. And those druids sure as hell didn't either. But you... You risked your life for us. Ah, we did it. Come on. Give me a kiss. Hold still. I'll kiss you when you stop bleeding, you lummocks. I'm your lummocks. Yes, you are. Now, stop squirming. Until we make the coin for our member. Gods, it seems we might actually make it to the city now. Hope the neighbors are a bit more welcoming. I'm glad you didn't die. No discounts once I'm running the wider Baldur's Gate, mind. You do good work. If you can handle more than goblins, might be I'll have use of you in Baldur's Gate. Damn it! Having that stashed away would have made life a lot easier. the road beneath my hooves. Taste the fresh grass. The young ones are a nuisance. But the road would not be the same without them. Thank you. Find the river and follow it down. Back to worrying about road rations it is. So many mouths to feed, but... Well, that's not a bad problem to have. Thank you, truly. We didn't die today. Tomorrow, perhaps, but not today. Thanks to you. Breaking your back before we get to Baldur's Gate. <laughs> Don't I know it. But there's two more boxes after this one. So it's true. You scattered the goblins. Peace can finally return to this corner of the Sword Coast. Thank you. Well, to each their own. Of course.
May you keep balance. You took it upon yourself to undertake the right of thorns. I ought to exile you from this place. Forever. Instead, I shall listen to the explanation that you owe me. I owe you nothing. Goblins swarmed us like roaches while you stumbled after the past. You chose to abandon us. I chose to protect us. Silence. The right has been ended. I will allow you to stay. But consider yourself a novice anew. You have forgotten the ways of the druids. Our place in the natural order. You shall learn it all once again, right here. Backslide, and nature's fury will crush you. As you wish, Master Helsin. She shows great insolence, but time will humble her, and the Grove still needs her. You will soon see why. But enough of that for now. I owe you my thanks. The Grove stands. Nature prevails. And again, I am in your debt. Speak to Wrath. He will reward you for your efforts. The journey to Moonrise Towers, and all the dangers that that entails. But that's tomorrow's problem. Take some time for yourself tonight. Rest, celebrate. Come morning, I'll be by your side. Banished. Then banish me. When the coming army marches, there will be none to protect you. Peace. Enjoy it while it lasts. Fair is preoccupied with a shiny pebble. Your presence goes unnoticed. Things are starting to calm down, thanks to you. We can finally get some rest. I hear the goblin leaders met their ends. Unfortunate for them, but very fortunate for the Grove. We wasted so much time fighting each other. Sylvanas taught us a lesson by letting an outsider save us. Yes! Yes! This is... Perfect. We're free of the goblins, but the grove is changed, wounded. The days ahead won't be easy. I'm glad we have Halsin to guide us. Well, at least the sun is nice. You should try it. Lay down and... Bask in his warmth.
You think you saved us? You just prolonged the inevitable. Sooner or later, other outsiders will bring trouble to the Grove. You've done it. You've brought House in back. Thank you. No, thanks is not enough. May Sylvanus bless you for all your days. I cannot imagine taking on a camp full of goblins was a simple task. To be expected. I'm glad you survived intact. And I promised you a reward, didn't I? Let me show you on your map where you can find the cash. Take this rune. You'll need it. Place it among the pedestals inside our library. When the wolf glows brightest, everything in the vault below will be yours. Oh no. I hate wolves. I didn't realize you were frightened of wolves, Shadowheart. Everyone's frightened of something. My fear's hardly irrational when you see the fangs on those things. I suppose you've noticed I'm not terribly fond of wolves. They're ravenous predators with fangs like daggers. It's hardly an irrational fear to harbor. You've been decent to me so far. Maybe if you can, don't make me face any more of them. At least, not alone. Really? Some might think it makes me a liability. Maybe that's what I like about you. You're different. Blessed day. I was worried I'd never see Master Halson again. You kept your word. Thank you. Huh. Look, I'm sorry. I didn't know what to do when you told me about the tadpole. I don't know if I can ever restore Sylvanus' peace to this place. But I'll have the chance. Thanks to you. Wing's still a little stiff. But I'm getting stronger. It might be useful.
here. Slave the druid's notebook mentioned. Its owner thought it was cursed. Druid magic. Better tread carefully. I've been dreaming of our enigmatic visitor again. She told me our purpose was to take on this cult of the absolute, to infiltrate its ranks and bring it down from the inside. She even offered me greater powers. The result of some manipulation of the tadpole's psionic abilities. Given the magnitude of what we're up against, I see no harm in considering the benefit this offer might afford us. Could be the only way to reach this source in one piece. I admire the vigor with which you uphold your principles, but I would remind you that the evils of the Absolute are far greater than any moral compromise we might make by using our tadpole's full potential. Your confidence in our existing capabilities is quite rousing, though. Perhaps that spirited enthusiasm will be strength enough to subdue the cult when the time comes.
be worth a look. Something over there. Be wary. This place is trapped. Squat, bow-legged, goblins, I'd say. Most pleasant traveling with company, if you ignore all the less pleasant aspects.
I know. I don't understand how exactly, but I felt it go to you. It's important. Keep it close. I suppose if we're going to keep helping each other, I might as well tell you. I was part of a group sent to retrieve it. Bring it to Baldur's Gate for our goddess. I worship Shah, the mistress of the night. It's my mission to deliver the artifact to her secret cloister in Baldur's Gate. <laughs> it hurts. Now that you have the truth, please don't make a big fuss about it. True. I didn't think you'd react so pragmatically. Perhaps I should have told you sooner. All right. As I said, Shah is my patron, my mistress, goddess of darkness and loss. I assume you've heard of her? Well, if that troubles you, perhaps you should fetch the bailiff to arrest me. Ah, but there's no bailiff here, is there? Just leagues of wilderness and the dangers lurking within. We're in this together, but I'll happily go it alone. My faith will keep me company. Lady of Sorrows guide us. Did you want something? The wound on my hand. It never quite heals. And sometimes it causes terrible pain to rip through me. It's my burden, though, from Lady Shah. I can feel her influence somehow. Difficult to say. Sometimes I wonder if it's supposed to be guiding me, punishing me, testing me. But perhaps it's none of those. Perhaps it's completely random. I'd like to hope there's more to it than that. Some meaning that Lady Shah will reveal to me when the time is right. Until then, all I can do is endure. I cannot say. Not with what I can recall. But even then, it would not be for me to question her will. Lady Shah has her reasons. Fine. What's on your mind? I suppose some would commend our actions. Goblins would have raised that whole place to nothing if it weren't for us. No excuse to rest on our laurels, though. We've still got our own problems to contend with. Does it even need to be asked? We're beyond me merely liking you. I think I'm a different person, owing to you. Oh. 
Hope you're keeping well, friend. Another visit from the Golden Paladin. It said we'll get the answers we need about the tadpole if we infiltrate the cult. Could be, but I'm not sure either. And I'd rather rely on our wits and our weapons than a tadpole that could be up to anything in there. <laughs> Funny you should ask. I was just thinking about what would have become of us without that nautiloid. I mean, I know where I'd be. Trapped in Avernus still, with the Blade of Frontiers on my tail. But what about you? <laughs> I can picture you getting mixed up in some outrageous shit. Giants, beholders, <laughs> Thayans, the works! Maybe once we've wrapped up the current shenanigans, we'll rest a bit and find some new heap of troubles to throw ourselves at. I had another visit from that dream figure. I take it you did too. It claims that if we infiltrate the heart of the cult that's giving out these parasites, we'll find the answers we're looking for. It gave me another gift, too. Just like it did the first time it appeared. Rather generous, if you ask me. And while we're at it, we can see how many more of these little worms we can harvest. Now, was there anything else? So it would seem. Hopefully he bumps into some knolls while stumbling around at night, and that's the last we hear from him. I didn't do anything. I was kidnapped, just like you. It seems Cazador wants me back. Cazador Tsar is a vampire lord in Baldur's Gate. The patriarch of his coven and a monster obsessed with power. He turned me nearly 200 years ago. I became his spawn. And he became my tormentor. It was him, I'm sure. Only he would know to send the Gur after me. It was a group of Gur that attacked me that night in Baldur's Gate. I would have died had Cazador not appeared and saved me.
probably thought it was funny. But more likely, he's trying to send me a message. He's reminding me of his power. Even in the middle of nowhere, he can reach me. And he wants me back. Concerned? Do you know the power a vampire lord possesses? He can change shape, turn into mist, call walls to do his bidding, shrug off blows like they're nothing. He could walk into our camp tonight and kill you with his bare hands. And you'd be lucky if death was the worst thing that happened to you. First, we have to... Uh, uh, I don't know. Well, if we kill his lackeys, he'll just send more. We just have to be vigilant, keep our wits about us, and kill any monster hunters on sight. Why do you insist on exhuming the past? I was a slave. A vampire spawn. Kept by the Tsar family. Perhaps I still am. I was never able to resist their commands. But now... I've been conveniently lost. They won't ever control me again. Who knows? Drow? Mind flayers? Death? Hopefully not ours. But maybe answers. If we can convince the right people to talk. I won't lie. It's tempting. If I keep the tadpole, I risk transforming into a grotesque monster. If I lose the tadpole, Cazador has control of me, body and soul, and I return to the shadows. It's grim either way, so why not sell what's left of my soul to a devil? Better he has it than Cazador. You're familiar with the phrase, better the devil you know. I know, Cazador. And I'll take anything that saves me from that. Another dream. Another order from that dubious visitor. It announced that we will find the answers we seek in the Absolute Cultist's lair, and offered another generous gift. A persuasive creature. It tempts us with power, expresses its admiration, its adoration. Avert your eyes whenever it appears, and do not avail yourself of this new power, no matter how alluring. You've no idea what damage it could do to us, how far into illithid madness it could drag us. Well chosen. Battles are won with swords, not mind games born of brain worms. And there will come a battle, of that I'm most certain. The one truth that fell out of the dream figure's cankered lips. It is a certainty. I had assumed our parasites served a Geich elder, but I believe they serve a greater master still.
A question that burns in my belly day and night. Elders and collectives abide by their own tenets. It would require a powerful creed to unite them. And now this voice, this creed, finds our own ears. If it reaches this plane, it may reach others. I have a confession. I was too hasty to judge you. I thought you witless, gutless, unimpressively bland. I don't pay compliments. I only say what is true. You've proven me wrong at every turn. You are efficient, dominant. Courageous. I swear, you would tear the horns off one dragon for plunging into another. You've gained my respect, and more still, my yearning. When I come near, your odor alone is enough to make my neck sweat and my hair stand on end. Isn't it obvious? I want to taste you. Perhaps tonight, perhaps later, but I want it all the same. Do you? Your loss, I fear. One day soon, you will wonder how my lips might have tasted. How my fingers on your skin might have felt. And you will wish you could return to this lost moment. Well met. It's said that anyone who bathes in the river of blood emerges as one born anew. It's a lot like that, I imagine. I feel the weight of these horns on my head. Curling upwards like a mammoth's tusks. I feel these ridges snaking down my neck. Not to mention a few bumps and prongs in unmentionable places. But I haven't seen my reflection just yet. Be my mirror. What do you see? It's because you know the heart lurking under the horns. The people will see a curiosity, maybe even a beast hungry for their souls. But I will slay their monsters, keep them safe. And one day they will see the Blade of Frontiers again. A possibility that's kept me awake countless nights. But I don't have a clue where to start, other than play her games and play by the rules. That's the only language devils listen to. We can have all for it, but it won't so much as chip one of her nailed claws. She'll escape to the Hells, and if we succeeded, my life would be taken in exchange. My contract is very clear. I can bring Mazora no harm. She'll have to let me out of my pact willingly. The only way out is if I can out-bargain her. We're standing here with nothing but the clothes on our backs and the worms in our heads. I'm so sorry to give you another reason to sleep restlessly, but it's my burden to bear. She won't touch you unless there's something there for her to take. Don't give her so much as an inkling there might be. Ah, my good fellow. Quite the cozy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. Go ahead. 
I'm listening. Ah, yes. Carsus. Carsus was perhaps the most powerful wizard that ever lived. The child who would be a god, the elves called him. And he tried. With a spell of his own devising, he endeavored to usurp in one fell swoop the power of the goddess of magic. Mistril, she was called then. Imagine what it must have felt like to be a god. To know yourself, to be untouchable. To be mistaken. As Carsus aimed his spell at her, she began to unravel. And with her, the entire weave. Too late did he realize what he had unleashed. It would have been the end of everything had not Mistral sacrificed herself. The goddess of magic is all magic. By dying, the entire weave was lost, and the spell that challenged a god failed. It was the end of Mistral. The end of Carsus and the end of an entire civilization. As the child who would be a god was turned to stone, his empire came crashing down around him. The floating cities of Netheril were no more. An event that came to be known as Carsus's folly. Loving them has its side effects as well. Now, so many centuries later, I try to follow in the footsteps of Carsus, not to destroy Mistra, but to prove my love for her. I try to control only a fraction of the magic that was unleashed that fateful day. I merely sought to return one tiny diamond to an imperfect crown. Gale's folly, one might call it. History, repetition, it's the way things go. If it should ever come to that, if I ever know I am no longer able to stop it, I will do anything I can to ensure no one but me pays for my mistakes. I will find the remotest place on the surface of Faerun, or perhaps far below in the depths of the Underdark. I will await that death alone. I promise I will not betray your trust. You kept me by your side despite the menace that I am. If worse comes to worst, I will be long gone before the curtain falls. I question the wisdom of that decision, but so be it. I'll be here in the meantime, idling away the hours. Fate spins along as it should. Dost thou require a new ally? Or mayhaps a resurrection instead? May the darkness protect you. If you're sure. Fine. I'll be here whenever you rediscover your taste in company. Soldier? Hell yes. Speak. It is done. Still breathing, despite everything.
What now? Assume nothing.
Look at them all. Guzzling poison like we've the right to be happy. At least someone agrees with me. Our dead deserve a sober tribute, not this display. Think of it. No more caves, no more tents, no more running away. We'll be in a city with roads and markets and... Homes. Yeah, Hells. I was hoping you wouldn't notice I was gone. No. I'm deeply proud of you. A touch less so of myself. In truth. I don't feel in a festive mood, and I didn't want to cast a grey cloud over the night. I'm a devil. I love the people from the Grove, but I unsettle them deep down, as I seem to unsettle everyone nowadays. You don't want a devil at your party. Horns this sharp will pop the balloons, you see, and the guests won't take kindly to scars quite so monstrous. Feel spikes beginning to sprout in places they really shouldn't. <clears throat> but off with you. This is your day. Have a dance. Enjoy the music. some time alone beneath the stars and I'll be back to my old self. Promise. Still, it's a night to remember. You've made sure of that. Beautiful night, don't you think? Nothing like a brush with destruction to make one appreciate the majesty of a celestial canvas. It's a view I would once have shared with my companion. Though definitely unaccompanied by such revelry. She preferred it when we were alone. Curled up before a crackling hearth with some ancient esoteric tome between us. Ink glinting in the firelight. being alone with their thoughts though I never felt alone with a book in my hand or with her for company I speak of Tara my Tressen assistant my constant companion through all the ills and tribulations my hubris has thrust upon me she'd be most impressed by our efforts saving these tieflings proud even and I've given her little to be proud of recently after I was afflicted with my condition, and locked myself in my tower for an entire year. It was inconsolable, wallowing in my self-inflicted tragedy. I've given up on myself, but Tara never did. It was her encouragement, her research that led me to my treatment. Once we knew that magically infused items were the key, she went out to find them for me. 
She saved my life. After so long being cared for by someone else, it feels good to have repaid the favor. Not directly to Tara, but to these poor tieflings. I'm sure she would approve. Smart does her a disservice. She's a fine wizard in her own right, though somewhat held back by her lack of opposable thumbs. You remind me of her somewhat. There's a steeliness in you. An unwavering tenacity, even in the face of, to be frank, quite dire odds. Wish she were here for me to make a formal introduction. But I would never ask her to undertake such a journey. She's safer at home. Besides, she was always telling me I needed to spread my wings, so to speak. Find mortal friends instead of hanging onto Mistress' coattails. So that's what I'm doing. I hope. <laughs> Very funny. But as we all know, nymphs are sticklers when it comes to their bathing routines. You, my friend, haven't been near a fresh spring in a ten-day or more. Not that I don't appreciate your... musk. Actually, rather like it. Well, it seems as good a time as any for me to stop babbling on. Wine is to wit, as meat is to... to... Oh, can't bloody remember it. There I go, then, proving your point. Perhaps we'd better leave it at that. My ineloquent tongue isn't worthy of your ear at present. Go. Indulge in the frivolities. They're good for the heart. And mine will be all the lighter to see you enjoying yourself. Cherry! That's infernal for cheers. Or possibly turnip. I need to dance! No. No, I need to lie down. Aha! There you are! Come now, settle in. I do hope you have partaken of something bracing. This may well take us all night. Why, your naming, quite obviously. That ballad was but a crude preview, a frame without its crowning jewel. Your nom de guerre. Something iconic, but not too much of a mouthful. We don't want to exclude the common folk, after all. I intend this tale to enrapture all. A wonderful one indeed. But your deeds loom larger than life now, my friend. You simply must have a title to match.
Far too much. This is the very problem. If you could set aside your many triumphs, carry out one defining act, not to belittle your achievements to date, of course, but besting a dragon, a giant, a god, perhaps? Hmm. I must deliberate. Go. Enjoy your evening. I shall have work for you in the days to come. This might be the wine talking, but I'm feeling inspired. Thinking of writing my next song about you. But I need an angle. Any ideas? Oh, come on. There must be something. Huh. As usual, getting ahead of myself. Enjoy your night, then. Go on now. Don't waste a night like this talking to me. We'll have plenty of time together on the way to Moonrise. Hmm, I'm sure there are. You strike me as extremely... resourceful. But there are many grateful people here who want to spend time with you. I must not keep you all to myself. As enjoyable as that may be. Go on, enjoy yourself. Seek out some wine before it runs dry. There are a lot of thirsty people around here. You have no idea how good it feels to see these people smiling. The singing we could probably do without, but even so, thank you. You came through for us. That's a change from most adults I know. And that sounds like the wine drowning your wits. Go on, enjoy yourself. I've squirreled away a few extra bottles. When the barrel's tapped out, I'll be there to save the night. For a price, of course. I have seen the Kithraki tear a screaming Neogi's legs from its belly to fashion into blades. Yet, they could not match your nerve today. It was enough to drive me to madness. I smell their blood on you still. I smell your moisture. How torturous for us both that I'll never get a taste. Oh, but do enjoy yourself this night. I intend to myself. Hope you're enjoying the night, hero. I certainly am. Cheers to many more like this. 
You know, I never pictured myself as a hero. Never thought I'd be the one they'd toast for saving so many lives. And now that I'm here... I hate it. This is awful. more for my trouble than a pat on the head and vinegar for wine. It's a heavy, rich red. Dry and sharp. See what I mean? Awful. All I want is a little fun. Is that so much to ask? Not at all. I was hoping for companionship. And, well, maybe a little death. Figuratively speaking. And not with you, just to be clear. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> Ugh, no. Anyway, don't let me keep you. I'm sure you have someone else to sniff around. Everyone seems to be in high spirits. Strange. You know who I never thought I'd find myself caring for? Exactly right. Never gave them much thought. Certainly not that bunch in the grove. Yet we came through for them. We saved their lives. Odd. It's not talking enough for my liking. Share a bottle with me? We should wait a little while. Until the others have drifted off. As you like. Try not to tie yourself out too much. Would you look at this place? All these people, happy because of us. It's nice to be somewhere where good is still possible. And with good potations too. Too, soldier. Enjoy yourself tonight. You've earned it.
fate spins along as it should. Dost thou require a new ally? Or mayhaps a resurrection instead? I like these people. They're joyful. It's contagious. Enjoy yourself tonight. Come morning, we've got a hard road ahead of us. Buzz of celebration quiets to a soothing hum as you approach your bunk. You've picked up a few pleasant memories on your journey amongst your struggles. You sleep alone, uplifted by memories of your recent triumphs. I trust you enjoyed your evening. After all your efforts, it was well deserved. It may be some time before you're afforded another such night. There is much to be done. Moonrise Towers beckons. I've told you all I know, and now I'll join your camp to help you face whatever's to come. With luck and the Oak Father's blessings, we might actually survive. Are you ready? Onward then. We'll speak soon, I'm sure. Shah's blessings upon you. I was. He mentioned Dark Justicias, and we've come across other signs of a Sharon presence during our travels. I'm not sure I can dismiss that as a coincidence. Copper for your thoughts. Go ahead, I'm listening. Father's blessings to you. few things that are too strong for me and cast those regrets aside you did not get caught up in the moment you seized it in other circumstances I would have done the same perhaps but best to not dwell on nights past there are plenty more yet to come
speak. If you must know, Vlekith requires everything of her children. I can't count how many bruises I've inflicted. Can't measure how much blood I've drawn in the Undying Queen's name. I know only blood red and death black. My mind is silver, and my body steel. I am what I must be. Say what I must be. To survive every beast I face and every wound I bear. I suppose you want to hear about Cazador. I don't want to say a damned thing, but that won't do anyone any good. Cazador Zar is a vampire lord in Baldur's Gate, the patriarch of his coven and a monster obsessed with power. Not political power or military power, I mean power over people. The power to control them completely. He turned me nearly 200 years ago. I became his spawn. And he became my tormentor. Not him, no. A gang of thugs attacked me, angry about a ruling that I'd handed down as magistrate. They beat me to death's door when Cazador appeared. He chased them off and offered to save me, to give me eternal life. Given that my choices were eternal life or bleed to death on the street, I took him up on the offer. It was only afterwards I realized just how long eternity could be. A vampire's spawn is less than a slave. They're a puppet. We have no choice but to obey our master's commands. They speak, and our bodies react. It's all part of the deal. Sometimes he'd order us to submit to torture. Sometimes he'd have us torture ourselves. Whatever his weather vain mood settled on. Thank you, but this isn't about sympathy. It's about knowing what we might be up against. The Mind Flayers aren't the only monsters out there. They're not even the only ones hunting us. All I'm asking is that you keep your eyes open and watch out for anything lurking in the shadows. What more could I ask? Now, is that all? Someone there? So, hey, we've got this soul coin, right? Thing is, I think I can use it. My engine can, anyway. 
Zariel used to top me up every now and again when she wanted me to go after an especially wicked target. They're already lost. Better to be used in service of the good guys than a devil, don't you think? Next time we're in a nasty battle, drop one my way. You'll enjoy the results. Fuck yes! Now I just need something to sink my teeth into.